changing. And now Sophie uh, from MQ will tell us a few words about, again, the strategy on how uh, research can transform psychiatry. Okay, thank you. Okay, we've heard a lot over today around how we know a lot about mental illness in terms of its impact on society. One in four people are impacted by some sort of mental illness, and that's directly affected. I don't think that there's a single person in this room who has not indirectly been affected by mental illness. The impact on society is immense, yet the investment in terms of research is low in comparison to physical disease. Despite the neuroscience showing that we know so much about the brain now, the neuroscience has been great advances in the last decades in terms of our understanding of the brain, but at the moment, this isn't translating into novel therapies for mental illness. And there is a huge, huge need for this. With so many people directly affected, as we have cured and understood physical disorders and infectious disease over the last 100 years, that chronic illnesses such as mental illness have now become the leading cause of morbidity in the Western world. In fact, mental illness is the leading cause of, of, um, of morbidity. And it's just not morbidity. There are shocking figures around mortality as well. In fact, that there is a 15 to 20 years difference in lifespan for those impacted by severe mental illness, which is quite shocking. And death by suicide remains the leading cause of death in young people. So really, it's quite clear that we need inv more investment here. And MQ is the first major charity being set up to try and tackle this problem through research. We want to increase our understanding, to understand the neuroscience, to understand what the interaction between the biological, the genetic, and the social environment factors are. Again, we're learning about the genes, we're learning about the biology, and we need to understand then that, that how it interacts within the environment and in the, so, the complex social structures that we live to actually see how mental illness um, emerges. We want to improve treatments. There are many great treatments out there, but these are re fre not fre frequently these aren't getting to the right people at the right time. We need to improve diagnosis rates so people can get early diagnosis and intervention, and they don't go through this cycle of trial and error before they get the right therapy. We also want to bring the hope of prevention. We really, really want to see if we can, early on, change that trajectory of mental illness, and we live in a world that we've prevented, you know, we've prevented physical illness after physical illness. Why can't we prevent mental illness? So what are we doing? So MQ um, was originated in 2013 with a startup investment of a donation of 20 million from the Wellcome Church Trust. With that donation, we were able to start our funding programs and to launch ourselves and, embrace, and engage with the academic community before we launched to the public at the end of this year for our major fundraising appeal, um, appeals. We launched with our fellows program. So here we really seek to reward the brightest and the best. We currently have 11 fellows. In fact, one of them is based here in Lausanne, and we're very excited to hear from the chair of our fellows committee, Emily Holmes, tomorrow. So these really are to create this next generation of researchers and stimulate the investment and the, the future world leaders in mental illness research. We have a Psy Impact program, which is around improving psychological therapies. And the one that I'm particularly excited about is the one we're developing at the moment, is our third program around children and young people. We know that 75% of mental illness emerges before the age of 18, 25% before the age of 14. We know that there are shared genetic risk factors. We know that there are shared environmental risk factors. We know that sometimes the early symptoms across mental illness, they often look the same. So what we really want to understand is what's going on during that incredible time period of development and really understand to see what, what's happening there that, that, that's creating the emergence of mental illness and to see if there's anything we can do to change that trajectory. Because the reality is we only need to nudge that trajectory to have a huge, huge um, both um, economic, but most importantly to the patient um, benefit across the lifespan. We're also very interested in data science. In fact, we're launching a funding program around data science, and we've been bringing together the uh, UK scientists and trying to engage and bring everyone together so that we, all the countries that have nationalized health services, such as the UK, have a rich, rich resource of information. They have a rich resource of both the clinical, 
the administrative, the educational, the judiciary, being able to bring all those da data together and really tr understand how, they, again, these social and biological factors interact and see what happens along the lifespan and to generate hypothesis and understanding about how these factors interact in terms of mental illness. We've also done an exhaustive um, analysis of the funding landscape. In fact, much of the figures that have been flashed on these slides have come from that analysis. We're currently revising these, so some of these figures might change, but I think they give a sense in terms of the overall lack of investment in the area. The other thing that we do is that we go out and we want to ask the patients, what and the patients and the people that are, at, um, that are um, diagnosed with a mental illness and their carers and ask them what matters to them. I think it's too easy for scientists and neuroscientists to feel so far away, so far removed from the patient to really understand actually what is it that we need to understand, what does the patient want, what do they feel are the most important research priorities. So we recently had in partnership with the James, um, James uh, Lind Alliance, we had an analysis that we invited people to submit their questions, and we whittled down 30,000 um, 30, questions down to 10 research priorities, which we can share with the funders and our own research programs. We also like to generate, bring together a community of scientists. So really what we like to do is not only in terms of developing our only funding programs, we really like to get, bring scientists together, bring the funders together, bring the patients together, and really actually create a whole movement in research and really create that energy and that dialogue. I mean, we're, we, we sort of feel that we're pushing against an open door in terms of the public engagement at the moment. There is a huge, huge, a lot of dialogue around stigma at the moment. The Duchess of Cambridge, the First Lady in the US, they're all talking about the need for reduced stigma, the need for improved services in young people. What we're trying to do is stimulate the dialogue about the need for more research, because at the end of the day, with research comes knowledge, and with knowledge comes hope, that one day that we can have prevention schemes, that we can have, um, we can have it that, you know, that, that we are, at every point in our lives, we are um, tested, we are looked at risk for illnesses from when we're born, we're... we're there's lots of prevention schemes, and perhaps in the future that we could have a prevention scheme for mental illness in terms of that we can understand how illness emerges, how that we could have accurate diagnosis, and we could have better interventions. Thank you.